One of the biggest batteries ever built in Australia has just been turned on. In fact, it's not far away from where I'm personally living now. And it was provided by Tesla. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'm really curious, guys. Does anyone know the answer to this? This Tesla battery, did it come straight from Tesla's factory in China or did it come from California? Now, I would assume it came from China. And that would likely mean it's using Tesla's latest version of its mega pack, which is the lithium iron phosphate batteries. However, regardless of the battery chemistry in these mega packs, this is the biggest battery pack that has ever been installed in the biggest, most popular state in Australia, which is New South Wales. Here in New South Wales, uh, renewable energy is still really lagging behind other states, such as Adelaide, Western Australia, Tasmania, even Victoria. But this will help New South Wales push further towards net zero. And this battery pack is a 150 megawatt, 300 megawatt hour Tesla system that was built by Edify Energy and Federation Asset Management. The Riverina and Darlington Point energy storage systems built on land in the Riverina are comprised of three independent units, which are contracted to Shell Energy and Energy Australia for the next decade. So you can see here, Energy Australia, which is the major electricity supplier in Australia, and Shell, which is obviously one of the world's biggest oil companies, have decided that they want to get into batteries. So this is not really done by the government. This is private companies saying, you know what, we can profit from installing a battery. Now, a lot of people think that, no, 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 coal is more profitable. Well, as you can see, um, private investment money is saying the complete opposite to that. The battery lives next door to Edify's 275 megawatt Darlington solar farm, which launched in 2020 with two synchronous condensers to stabilize its output into a particularly weak part of the grid. Uh, basically, the grid here, they, could, they saw an opportunity. The grid there is not particularly strong. And so they built a massive solar farm. Now, what happens with that solar energy during the day? Well, of course, most of it is going to be used straight away. It's going to be soaked up by the grid. But during the nighttime, well, there's not going to be much power in that area. But there's plenty of sunny days where the amount of energy going to this solar farm, it will be well in excess of what the grid will use. So that extra energy will simply go into this Tesla battery pack and then be used at night time. In particular, that peak period, right? When the sun goes down. So, so you're talking probably 6.30, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night. That's when your peak energy use happens. People get home from work, they turn on their air conditioners, and then this battery goes into use. And these batteries are extremely profitable. A similar size battery was actually built in Adelaide, and the company that built it, uh, apparently Elon Musk actually promised that it would be done in 100 days and if it wasn't built in 100 days it would be free. The government mocked him. He said it was stupid. He said Elon Musk was being ridiculous. Uh, they called it a big banana and it was so profitable for the company that they actually decided after about one or two years to double the size of it. They were making so much money because they were disrupting Pika plants. Pika plants charge an insane amount of money for their energy. So basically this battery, that's what that will be doing, disrupting Pika plants coal and gas peaker plants will be put into bankruptcy as a result of this big battery. The new battery will provide grid stabilization services using Tesla's advanced grid forming inverter technology, which can operate in a virtual synchronous grid generator mode, mimicking the synchronous nature of traditional fossil fuel and hydropower generators. Basically mimicking what a, what a gas or coal peaker plant can do, but it can do it much better it can respond much faster. Pika plants take about half an hour to respond on average. This battery pack can respond within 60 seconds to increased grid demand. It's a much better solution. With batteries like this, you avoid having blackouts on the hottest days of the year. Basically, they solve the grid's problems. So actually a really cool solution. Now, the other thing that you gotta remember, people are probably thinking, why, why, why buy it from Tesla? Why would you buy Tesla batteries? This cheaper, you, why not just buy it straight from CATL, right? Why not just buy it straight from BYD? BYD do big batteries too. Um, it would be cheaper. It's true, it would be. 
However, here's the key point. This battery uses Tesla's advanced grid forming inverter technology, which can operate in a virtual synchronous generator mode, mimicking the synchronous. Basically, what they're saying is they're paying the extra money for Tesla's software. Tesla has the best battery software. Stephen Panitza, co-founder and head of renewable energy at Federation Asset Management, says batteries are a placeholder for fixing grid stability issues while transmission lines are being upgraded. As the nation's aging coal plants retire, in particular, New South Wales is still very dependent on coal, the need for energy storage becomes ever more pressing. Advanced grid forming batteries like the Riverina Bess or the Riverina Battery are critical to extracting the maximum capacity from an existing grid infrastructure, allowing timely integration of additional wind and solar generation into the NEM while our grid infrastructure is upgraded. Advanced inverter technologies are a superior solution to challenges in the grid than the legacy systems. NFI CEO John Cole says the newly operational technology elevates the playing field when it comes to ironing out the variable output of wind and solar. Arena, which kicked in $6.6 million, according to reneweconomy.com.au, to the project last year, expected the battery to specifically improve system strength in this weak part of the grid, unlocking opportunities to support more renewable energy generation. So as a result of this battery, the cool thing is it's already supporting a solar farm, but more solar will be built in order to well, basically pump more energy into this battery pack. Energy Australia has signed off-take agreements for two-thirds of capacity for the battery, taking over two of the three units. So in other words, basically energy companies have already signed up to say, we want the energy, we want the electricity, give it to us. So demand is clearly there. Energy Australia head of portfolio development, Daniel Nugent, said it will use the battery to support summer demand peaks. So big batteries are actually beginning to take over across Australia and they are disrupting the existing fossil fuel scenario here. It, well, I've said for years, since I started this channel, this would happen very, very quickly. I was mocked on the channel. A lot of people said, you're too optimistic. That was so, so often. Oh, your optimism is really nice, man, but you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Um, renewable energy will just take, it'll take 20, 30 years. You're, you're just, you're being too positive. Well, no, the truth is here. After I made these comments, Australia committed to being, well, basically almost fossil fuel free by 2030. And the reason for this is purely economics. Big batteries are rapidly taking over in the Australian energy grid, playing a massively important role in providing grid services, network support, and delivering power in evening peaks at lower prices than fossil fuels can do, and at way better ability to actually meet demand and sort the basically sort out the problems in Australia's grid. This is the second big battery in New South Wales to be commissioned after the Walgrove battery in Western Sydney. And there's another big battery, in fact, that is three to four times as big as this one. And another one that is six times bigger than this one that will be built over the next few years. The one that's six times bigger is actually going to be built only a matter of about 15 to 20 kilometers away from here where I live right now. The largest battery in Australia to date is Neon's 300 megawatt, 450 megawatt hour Victoria Big Battery. And it's 6,000 battery modules sit in 218 battery units. Now that battery was provided and built by Tesla. So was the original battery that I referred to, which is called the Hornsdale Power Reserve, which is now 150 megawatt and 193 megawatt hours. So as you can see, renewable energy is it's taking over Australia very, very quickly. I think probably quicker than any other country in the world. One of the key reasons we have so much land here that we don't use. It's basically useless desert land. But also, the economics make sense. We live in a very sunny country. We also live relatively close to China. We don't really have much of a solar market. We don't make our own batteries. Well, we do actually make iron flow batteries and some others, but not really in terms of mass manufacturing at a big scale. So we actually order all of our stuff, or most of it from China or from Tesla in China. And therefore we get it at fairly low cost. So there's a range of different reasons why renewable energy makes an incredible amount of sense here in this 
country, which a lot of people call the lucky country. I think they're right. You can really see why. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.